Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about probably the hardest agent to play in Valorant. And it's also one of my favorites, and that's Cypher. But the reason why Cypher is so difficult is because he's a Sentinel. And I would say most Sentinels are very difficult to play. Killjoy and Cypher are definitely the two hardest, I would say, in that class. So basically, the basic outline for Cypher's kit is you got the cam, has to be on a flat surface to peek. You can be on the other side of the map and you can still be activated in it. You got the trip still. Once you go into the trip as an enemy, you activate it, you're revealed, and then you're pretty much dead. And next you have the cage. Once you activate the cage, it's a visual denial. You can't really see anything through it. However, if you're the, if you're the enemy and you go in and out, you will be making a lot of noise for the cypher. However, a cypher yourself, you won't be making any noise. So basically on cypher, especially on the defensive round, you're the sentinel. So you're supposed to be anchoring the site. Your job is to prevent the enemy from pushing onto the site too easily and at least getting one or two kills each round, and you're doing your job. When it comes to early on, and especially late game, there's mostly two setups you only do as a Cypher. So you have your default setup, where you have one trip and one entrance, and you have another trip and another. And that's what's considered your default setup. Eventually later on in the game where you want to mix it up, these are considered kill trips. These, this trip itself is almost impossible to kill without being revealed. And a good Cypher will capitalize and use these trips to punish the enemy team. So when it comes to the difference between basic setups and kill trip setups, you have to alternate between the two and you don't want to be predictable on site. For example, on Sunset, this trip is almost impossible to break unless you're a Sova or you're a Raze or a KO. You can destroy it with your util. However, if you don't have any of those guys on your team, this is this trip itself is basically a free kill each round. So I might use that trip with a combination of this or a basic setup. However, sometimes they're just going to be head rushing onto the site and I don't have time. And I know once in a while a team might just head rush into one site. So I might place one of my trips down here. I will throw one cage up here. And I have to line up exactly. Bam. Throw my cam up here. And I might throw one cage right here just so I can peek default. So this kill trip is meant for me peeking off this one way. So I might have my cam right here ready. And I can see once they enter into the area. And as soon as they're about to, I pop the can I pop the cage and I spam through. However, let's just say they destroy the trip. I still got this bottom trip right here. It's a very surprising trip where let's just say the camp's not destroyed yet. I will pop the cage. I can just walk in here for free. I can destroy the planter here, here, and I might get out. Not as simple as that usually, but it's very something you can use to your advantage in the future. This is a very basic kill setup within B bombsite on sunset and to be a good cypher player sometimes you don't want to play B every single round even though if that trip is still very good sometimes I want to move around my trips so maybe on one round I might have a trip right here where I now I have so much information where if I'm rotating here. to A I know this is clear because this trip has not been activated only two agents can get past it and that's an omen or jet so I might place my two trips right here, or I might close this door and then play off a trip right there. So Cypher's kit is all about information and denial information for the enemy team. You don't want to be too predictable, but you also want to capitalize on these trips. So sometimes you want to alternate back and forth between these trips. Sometimes I'll play on A, sometimes I'll play on B. But again, I don't want to be too predictable. And I want to make sure if they're being super aggressive, I want to maximize that. I want to make sure I'm going to punish them. Your job as a Cypher is to punish people who are being too aggressive. Because if you run, if you run straight, you won't have enough time to react to the trip. While people who are slow, you want to punish those people for just peeking straight up. Because if you have your cam over here, let's just say you have your cam over here, and you have one of those slow people peeking, well, I know they're slow, and I just have to swing quickly and back out. So the bane of existence of every Sentinel main is basically when you set up on a site, and unfortunately they're on the complete opposite of the site, and I swear it happens every time I play Cypher or Killjoy where they never hit the site I want them to go. 
So that's why you want to mix it up each round. So what happens when you're set up on one site? However, you have to rotate all the way to the other. So what I like to do is I like to grab my cam back, have one basic trip in the entrance way. Now, depending on if the door is closed or broken on sunset in particular, I might go all the way and close it and then rotate around. Again, there's a bit of a long rotate. So what might happen is if there's two people on B, I might call for my teammate to close that door. So I don't have to place a trip there. And I might just rotate around and place my trip in mid. I prevented so much information from any lurker being effective. However, you always got to be cautious if there's an omen, there is always a potential for a lurk. So basic recap, don't be predictable. Mix in kill trips within basic setups. Don't be afraid to alternate sites. Don't rely on one set of sites, especially if you're playing against certain comps. Also, make sure you learn trips on each site. So when it comes to offense, your range of motion is kind of limited of what you can do, obviously, especially because your kit, because your whole kit is all about denial. So a good situation is mostly blocking out the entranceways from flanks. So what I like to do as a cipher is maybe I'll prevent a A push or A flanked. And since all I have to do is stay alive, I know that this area is pretty much clear if I want to play mid. However, all this area is going to be clear for my teammate if they're pushing B and likewise for A. So sometimes like on a basic round like this, especially on pistol round, I like to spread around my trips on offense, but at the same time, you don't want to be too obvious. So for example, if my team is pushing A, you don't really want to put a trip there if you're going to be playing up here, right? Since you have control of all this area. So maybe placing a trip right here is a good idea, but you don't want to place that trip because that provides literally zero information. And that trip is basically just a waste because you know you're clearing out here because you're playing mid while your team is rushing A because your job is to be a flanker when you're a sentinel on offense. So maybe potentially a good trip is for rotators. You might get into a position where... If you get it to the top of A or the top of B, you maybe you place a trip here, you're playing here, and I can slowly peek up. And since I blocked off here and I blocked off here, all I know is enemies will be coming from all the way over here and over here. And I've pretty much isolated. Okay, and now I know where all the enemies are and where they possibly can be. So once I peek up, if there's no trip, again, that's my trip, I can just clear this, and then eventually I can start clearing this. Just remember, you always have to worry about the anchor upon attacking or lurking each site. Just for example, if your teammates are hitting A, and you've got a nice little peek, always got, you always got to be worried about the anchor that's probably the last one to leave on B. So since you blocked off information here and here, they have to come this way going straight into you so you just gotta be wary of that so what happens when i'm attacking on a site with my team so let's just say not every round as a sentinel you want to be lurking and it's as simple as that because eventually it's going to get obvious and eventually you're going to get punished so certain rounds i will rush with my team so i'll be probably the last man back and the reason why i stay back is because i don't want to provide too much information they know i lurk they know i don't play with my team so if i am playing with my team that round they're going to be self-conscious, be like, okay, this guy is usually a lurker. So where the hell is this guy going to be playing? So if I don't make any noise, and I'm not playing anything, and my bot teammates planted it down, they're self -con this enemy team is going to be self-conscious of, well, this guy's a lurker, so he's probably on the flanker somewhere. However, I'm not, so I can play with my team. So if I'm hitting on the site with my team, I might throw a cage, especially on B, I might throw a cage here. Because now I'm blocking so much aerial denial of over here. And I might throw a cage over here. Or I might throw a cage over here. Both cages work. Now this might... There's still going to be a gap over here. It's not the biggest cage in the world. But most likely here and here are good things. Or you can do double cage over here. Okay. Again, there's still going to be a gap. So you have to be very careful. However, let's just say the bomb's been planted. And most likely you're going to have one trip. And so it's this trip. So you're preventing any information from any lurkers on your flank. However, 
this is where you can get creative. Most likely as a controller or a sentinel, you're going to be the last one alive. And so you want to play the odds. You don't want to wide swing everybody and just throw away your life. So sometimes, let's just say the bomb's planted here. I might throw my cam right on the bomb. And so most likely, in most situations, they're just going to smoke me off. And so I have my cam for the bomb. I and then I ping them. They're revealed. And then potentially I can just spray. However, or I can bam, bam, pop cage. And I don't have to spam in the open. And the th same thing goes with defense. Um, I forgot to add. If I'm going to defuse a bomb, I might just throw my cage on it and I can stick it. Just for the record, these cages last as long as I'm pretty sure the whole duration. So that's it for my basic cipher guide, everybody. Um, if you have any more information, don't be afraid to comment down below. Um, again, recap. Mix everything up. Don't be obvious. Don't be predictable. That goes with offense and defense. Play around, play around with your trips. You don't have to swing everything as you cipher. It's providing information about rotators can provide so much information. Like a nice little lurk play on A, nice little lurk play on B. And again, you also have to be self-conscious about the anchor of the, of the opposing team as well. Yeah. So I'll see you next time, everybody. Stay tuned for more content. And don't be afraid to hit that like and subscribe.